Okay, welcome back to video 13 brought to you by Precision Microbes. My name is Tommy Heffernan. I've had great fun putting these videos together. I've learned a lot and for me it's been about what have I learned? Um, I'm far from an expert um, but uh, you know for me part of this is uh, trying to communicate out what I've learned. I actually find that very beneficial. So a very selfish video series but supplementation I'm going to cover today. Um, but first of all I think I have to look at uh, even if I pick any species of animals, even ourselves, if we look at uh, if I'm working and I'm busy and I'm eating like crap, I can't expect to go into a chemist and look for a tonic or a probiotic that's just going to solve all problems. We've got to be, and this is why I always focus, being brilliant at the basics, doing the simple things well is still fundamental. Supplementation, be it gut health supplements or any supplements, are tools for us to aid maybe around good management. So the key factors like we've discussed very much, so diet, uh, the environment, the animals are in, uh, our management, minimizing stress. Uh, over my 20 odd year career, I really have been interested in stress and its impacts. So I think we underestimate it. The key element, of course, to all this is that for everyone's horse or their individual animal, maybe stables or yards, that they're working with their own vet, equine nutritionist advisors. Um, and this series is just an overview. People will go to their trusted source of information um, and in each individual animal make good decisions, I suppose. Um, when we look at all these things being right, we do know, and I've covered in earlier video series, that if we look at biological evolution and we kind of understand, uh, I call it biological and behavioral optimization, I won't spell it out because it's too long, is that we, we do need to understand where animals have come from and their needs. And horses are on grazing animals, the type of grazing to do, that they're frequent small volumes, the importance of forage in their diet. Um, but we do know through domestication, and we've seen this across all animal species, is that that brings challenges, particularly when we look at higher starch diets, maybe um, confinement for longer periods of time, uh, all kind of normal routines and how we now manage horses. And that's part of why people enjoy having horses because they can compete with them, they're racing, um, you know, breeding, showing, whatever that might be. That does bring challenges. So even with the best will in the world, there is challenges for uh, horses in, in their everyday routines, uh, particularly around gut health. We would have covered a lot of those challenges, but it is important to be brilliant at the basics. So I suppose the need for supplementation is a tool on top of that, particularly when we look at periods of stress, diet, competition, is it something um, we're, we're going to need? And again, uh, within you know within uh, i suppose breeds within age groups there's different challenges if we look at stress like weaning stress and um, maybe competition stress transport stress different horses will have different reactions so it's again back to uh, getting advice from your vet or your nutritionist on that individual animal and their challenges and it's maybe not all gut health it's actually that full clinical um, examination to see what is the the, what are the underlying factors of what's the challenge? But when we do look at supplementation, it is a necessary tool and it can be an aid to it. So at Precision Microbes, we work across species and we work with prebiotics and we work with uh, probiotics. And why we're quite unique is we're working with postbiotics and I'll explain the difference between all of them. Now our equine product is a complementary feed, so these our other species blends are, are pro and postbiotics, but our equine uh, product is a complementary feed. It is very, very unique, but I just want to, when we talk about gut supplementation, so people understand, um, and I'll try and get, do some colours here, um, so people do understand you know, what the different types of supplements are and what, what are they designed to do. Uh, so your prebiotics, your probiotics, um, and then your postbiotics, which we're heavily involved with, which is a really interesting area, um, really exciting uh, area. Probably no one else is as excited as I am. But um, okay, when we think about the gut and we think about some of the challenges, and if you watched the earlier videos, we, we talked about dysbiosis and leaky gut and those challenges there, and the importance of kind of that fully functioning, healthy gut microbiome. So this is the lumen, this is the cell wall at a very cellular level, uh, the beneficial microbes, their key role in digestion, immunity, and competing with harmful pathogens, this lovely protective mucin layer produced by the goblet cells, nice cell integrity, and then these immune cells here, um, when we look at the immune cells as well, um, you know, playing an important role in this. We, I think we covered immunity in video four. So many videos, can't even remember myself. So when we think about you know, good gut microbiome health, good integrity, Obviously, all these these are the key drivers that we discussed in lots of the different videos for 
gut eubiosis, where we have disruptions then we're looking at supplementing. So if I just pick pre, pro and postbiotics, there is, of course, there's essential oils, there's different things, there are organic acids, there's different things you can look at for supplementation. But when we look at these pre, pro and postbiotics, what are we trying to do? Well, if we look at prebiotics, um, we mentioned in video three uh, about how folds develop their microbiome. And these uh, non-absorbable sugars, these oligosaccharides that are in uh, colostrum and mare's milk, they're actually designed to feed microbes. So prebiotics essentially are a feed for, for gut microbes. Um, there's definitions in all of these, but essentially at the end of it, if it's to be defined as such, it's that they have a health benefit. So when we feed them, they have a health benefit. There's lots of different prebiotics. Prebiotics. So if we look at the oligosaccharides, it's mannan, fos, and um, if we look across this inulin, there's loads of different prebiotics. Essentially, fiber itself and good forage um, is, a, a, to me, a, a really good prebiotic because when prebiotics go into the gut, what they're doing is they're a feed source for the bacteria to, to ferment. Uh, and, and live off. So prebiotics are essential. That's why forage is a really important component, I suppose, essentially, because a good forage diet will feed the microbes, particularly, and a lot of this focus now will be on the hindgut. I'm not talking about uh, gastric ulcer syndrome. So we look at hindgut, so this is probably more focused on supplements for the hindgut. Um, so prebiotics, essentially, um, bacteria used to ferment. They use, it's kind of the feed for good bacteria. So when we look at prebiotics, we're trying to support beneficial bacteria. There'll be different prebiotics that are there, but that's an important component of it. The next thing we look at is actually when we actually use probiotics. So what are probiotics? Probiotics, the idea of probiotics is, um, if you look down through history, is really interesting. Um, the godfather, there's different godfathers for probiotics, but the, the, the original person who really kind of drove this on was a scientist called Eli Metchnikoff. He won a Nobel Prize for his work on the innate immune system. And he actually went to study humans in Bulgaria that were, uh, that were living to centenarians, to 100 years of age. And what he discovered was that they were drinking a lot of fermented products, uh, fermented milks. Um, and he discovered the first sort of probiotic, commercial probiotic bacteria, Lactobacillus bulgaris. Um, I think if you look and you fast forward now with all the research I'm going on, uh, uh, and I, I know I've talked across species, but it is relevant. If you look at all the um, research around um, human gut health, and the actually, we're kind of going back to that idea of fermented products, the lactobacillus, the caseis, the acidophilus, that these have a beneficial effect. So the idea of probiotics was always that when we give them, we administer, we're trying to support and mimic what beneficial microbes are doing. Um, when we look across species, there are certain universal colonizers we use. So I don't know what the future might look like. We might have a very specific blend for species. Um, we might have a very specific blends for individual animals. I don't know, but at the moment we use these universal colonizers where we accept that this is a probiotic bacteria that's been licensed for that species. Um, the one that in Ireland is licensed actually yeast is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Um, but there is, if you go globally, there is other bacteria that are in the probiotic, some of the lactobacillus species, probiotic category. Um, and again, it all comes down to regulation, what you can and can't say, and what, what you know, you must back up what your, your, your probiotic bacteria is doing. Essentially, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to actually, with probiotics, add more of beneficial microbes in there that's going to help and support. Now, when it comes to, um, and again, research is ongoing, Generally with probiotics, so probiotics come from the Greek word probios, which means for life, is that often when we look at probiotics, we end up having to feed them as a daily supplement. Um, very rarely do we have a probiotic that I have found or seen in the research that when we go in and we'll alter the gut and get it back. There's often a regression back in some of our horses or different species where a lot of that's influenced by the earlier life development in the gut microbiome. So probiotics are actually designed to be given every day as a supplement. Um, again, um, probiotic bacteria, I suppose what, what we do across species is what we're very unique at is we are culturing liquids with live beneficial bacteria for calves, for pets and for other livestock. Um, and that's a really key element to what we do. We're actually using live beneficial microbes. We've developed a very unique propagation uh, mechanism for that. And um, the other thing we are actually involved in is postbiotics. So when we actually think about how do uh, beneficial microbes or interact at cell level is they produce these metabolites we call postbiotics. Now they can be 
a vast array of different postbiotics. Um, I might have covered, I think I've covered short chain fatty acids. These are really interesting. My favorite postbiotic is butyrate to read about because when you look at the research on butyrate, on children, babies, foals, horses, uh, pigs, ca calves, it's an incredibly um, powerful because of its various roles in immune stimulation, keeping cells together, that transelectrical resistance, it's actually involved in stimulation of mucin production by goblet cells, these G protein coupled receptors that, that it links in with in the digestive system to stimulate a lot of these responses. Really interesting. So I think, because I'm incredibly biased, the postbiotic space is a really, really exciting one. What I've seen over my 22 year career, uh, I've, never, I've never worked with, with products that have delivered such a, a positive outcome. Um, so. We're, we're, we're very much focused on the pro and postbiotic spa space. So when we look at supplements, they're the kind of how, pro how these different things work. Prebiotics are a feed for the good bacteria. The good bacteria essentially are like factories. We're trying to mimic what the good bacteria in the gut are doing. We're often using universal colonizers. Um, different species will have different licensed probiotics. And then when it comes to postbiotic metabolites, which is a new area, that's very much focused on where the rubber meets the, the road from a functional perspective. Again, I think my key thing is that, of course, I'm incredibly biased. I want you all to go and, uh, what was the hashtag? As if he doesn't remember it. Just try it. Um, for us, with, with our equine complimentary feed, um, I think uh, go to our website, listen to what people are saying. Um, for your average horse, it's 100 mils a day in feed. I'll try it, try it for 50 days. It's an organic product. It's fully tested in the French lab for uh, anything uh, related to doping or anything like that. Please contact if you've us if you have more questions um, or talk to your own uh, vet about it. Um, so I think the key thing is with supplements is that um, there's different supplements there. It can be a very confusing marketplace. It's an evolving space. My own opinion is that the science is getting better because we have a thing, uh, and I've been heavily involved in the research, called metabolomics. We now understand more about what's actually happening in the gut, what are the metabolites, what are they doing, um, the diagnostics are getting better. Um, so it is an exciting space, but it's for everyone's own decision to work with the expert or the person that you trust, uh, be it your vet, your nutritionist, maybe both, um, or you know, people will talk to each other about results as well. Um, but again, working, working on an individual basis, understanding what the animals presented, what they need, um, and gut health supplements are one part of maybe supplements horses are getting, but when you look at the gut, um, Hippocrates, the godfather of modern medicine, who you have to mention every time you talk about the microbiome, said that all disease begins in the gut. But I'm beginning to think that all health can actually start in the gut because we have so much of the immune system, digestion is key, the gut's like a sponge. If it takes the nutrients in, well, our animals are going to be healthier and perform better. It's linked to the gut, it's linked to skin. It's linked to the lungs, and um, it's integral. So really, all health begins in the gut. So when we are making a decision around supplements, if we get all our management right, it can really make a difference to overall health. I've really enjoyed making this video series. I've learned a lot. I've come from a low starting point, and um, so I'm always about learning and growing. So who knows what knowledge we'll have picked up in another year or two? Uh, thanks to everybody that I've worked with as well in Precision Microbes, and particularly I have to shout out to a lot of the equine vets who've uh, been educating me. Uh, and talking to me and also the customers who've been using precision microbes be it yard stables or in individual horses giving us that feedback we, uh, we always look for that feedback and um, it's been incredibly positive thankfully um, but we're always you know willing if, if people aren't happy to let us know um, and, we, and I've learned a lot from the trial work we've been doing from various places to Austria to Hungary to in Ireland at home and looking forward to doing lots more trial work around what we're doing so that's it um, that's the video series. This was probably a longer one, of the longest one of all. Video 13, supplementation, a tool when it comes to hindgut health on top of good management. Um, every horse is slightly different, but um, I think um, it's certainly these are tools uh, as the science develops that are going to be a, a part of equine health, nutrition, and medicine. Thank you for listening to our video series of being brilliant at the basics. I have learned a lot. Um, if you've listened to all the videos, uh, I'd like to thank you, Mom, um, for your continued support. Okay, uh, um, that's it for me uh, from the video series from Decision Micro. I would recommend it, and I have recommended it to a good few different people, and I suppose it's up to themselves whether to use it or not after that, but from what we've seen of it, we definitely recommend it.